Good afternoon, welcome. I'm Melissa, and we are going to make ourselves a nice little hot cup of coffee, get warmed up, <laughs> and we're gonna go outside and get ready to bring all the plants that are out there back inside. I kind of have an idea in my head of where I want to put them all. I am gonna be putting them mostly in my dining area here, but I do have to clear some room and I'm going to give you a closer look at what I plan to do and how I'm gonna keep them happy since they've been used to being outside since I think I put them out in March of this year. So they've been outside for quite a while. So I'm gonna walk you through my little pest treatment I'm gonna do and yeah, where they're gonna hang out until probably March of this coming year. I do have a lot of plants out there, like 20 maybe and some big ones. So it's gonna be interesting trying to fit them all in here. And it's a little bit of a chilly day. We've had some cold weather recently. Uh, I think it's like in the 60s right now. It's not chilly, it's very sunny, so that will hopefully help <laughs> uh, warm me up. But we did have some pretty cold weather, so it's time to bring them in. Star says hi. Hi, girlfriend. She's a little cutie pie. Ooh. Do you wanna say hi? You guys don't see Star that much. Cause she's my husband's kitty. Yeah, hi. Hi. So let's make ourselves a nice cup of coffee and I think I'll give you an overview of the areas I'm looking at putting the plants and then we'll start bringing them in. And I have some that I'm gonna repot and spray and treat and all that. <laughs> That is so good. <laughs> Definitely just what I needed to get started. I have to get the Halloween decor down. I only have a few like random pieces throughout, uh, but this is my dining area and this is where I plan to put a majority of the plants that are outside here. So I have to reconfigure this area. My plants are kind of thirsty over here, especially my poles. I haven't watered them this week. All of my Hoya are over here at the window. I had treated them for mealies 
last month and I haven't noticed any mealies come back, but my plan is to take all of my Hoya out and put them in my bedroom. And then I'm gonna move the poles probably closer to this side, or I might just slide the shelf over as much as I can to that light switch and make room for all my outdoor plants here. I'm gonna try and utilize as much as the window light as possible because that number one is one of the main things that you need for your plants when they come back in is light, especially if they're getting a ton of light, they're gonna need that supplemental light. I am gonna add additional grow light to this area um, to kind of help supplement them. But yeah, I wanna try and utilize as much window space as possible. I have three big monsteras and a birds of paradise. I have my squammy. I have that shelf. I have some plants that are a ton of plants on the front porch and beyond that patio that have to come in. So I'm gonna try and squeeze as much as I can into that area. This is the bedroom space that I'm working with. So I'm gonna utilize the shelving units that I have here and I'm gonna add additional grow lights. The Hoya I'm gonna bring in here and squeeze as many Hoya as I can on these shelves. And the shelf that's outside I'm gonna put by the window and yeah, it'll just be pretty much Hoya, anything pet friendly in this area. So I need to water clean, and yeah, like I said, reconfigure this area for, you know, some of those plants so I can make room for all the outside ones. I am not putting any plants into my plant room that are outside. I don't want to risk anything like coming in. So plant room is literally just going to stay how it is. And I won't be adding any outside plants or anything in here. I do have space for it, but I don't want anything to transfer to any of these plants. So not putting anything in here. And what I was thinking is I think I might utilize this space in here because it's the only other space that has a tiny bit of light coming in through that crack. <laughs> Uh, this money tree and I have a little snake plant prop are the only plants here. It's definitely not enough light by any means. I need to get more light for this space. But I was thinking about putting, um, do you see those snake plants that are out there? Uh, those guys get a ton of sun. Uh, I have technically three snake plants. I'm going to leave my cactus planter out there. And then I have like a ficus. I have a couple ficus on my front porch. So I'm thinking about the three snake plants, um, just doing them in this area. I can probably do one in that corner, or I might just put them together actually over here. Um, I was thinking about hanging uh, a grow light here to shine down on them. I did order an uh, Amazon order yesterday or the day before. It should be coming today. It hasn't arrived yet. So I already got grow bulbs, the 15 watt Sansi. So I have four different E26 bases coming along with another thing of outlet timers. So when all that gets here, um, I'll show you kind of what I plan on doing to add additional light. Since it is somewhat of like a chilly day out, I don't want to use the watering hose that's outside. I feel like I don't want to jet blast my plants with freezing cold water, but I need to like hose them all off. So. I don't really want to do that in my bathtub either, so I feel like the only option I do have is with the watering hose. So I might like take it and sit it into the sun so the water can get a little warm, <laughs> uh, maybe, and then I'll just spray like my plants down outside and then bring them in. I'm going to be spraying them with the hose and using Castile soap. And then I need to check and make sure I don't have bugs in my soil. I'll just like check I'm not using any pesticides or anything. I'm not watering anything besides nematodes in my soil. So again, that's why I kind of want them confined to one area. That way, if there happens to be a pest, I can uh, get rid of it <laughs> or like put it back outside quickly until I can like repot it or do something with it. Uh, most of my plants are up on plant stands. They're elevated. so. I don't think any of them would have any pests in the soil, but you never know. I think I'm just more concerned about the leaves possibly having pest. I feel like the ones that have been more on the outside portion, on the outside outside, 
are more prone to having like something in the soil versus ones that are like enclosed on my patio. And I don't think the ones on my front porch would have anything minus a lizard because we have a ton of lizards that uh, climb all my snake plants. They live like on our front porch area. They pop their heads out all the time and you can see them running around. <laughs> So yeah, that's the kind of the plan and overview. I think the first thing I'm gonna do is move the Hoyas into the bedroom and clear up the space in the dining area. And that way, when I start bringing them in, I can just put them in their spot. So I think that's my plan, just to kind of reorganize in here and then uh, spray and get ready to bring them in. It actually fit nicely with what I had here already. So that one on the end is what was outside. And I scooted it over to the left a little bit. That way, I was actually just gonna put it here in the window, but I figured I'd just leave the cat stand there. That way they're not gonna be tempted to reach these plants. <laughs> so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, roughly like 11 cubby holes. I think I have eight Hoya to bring over, so I should have plenty of room. Okay, yeah, you can see it a little bit better. So uh, that grow light in there doesn't spread too wide because of how low it is in that lamp, but I'm just gonna leave that one as is. And since this is all north facing, this gets like minimal light. There's hardly any light coming in. Like if you measure the foot candles, it's barely anything. Uh, so I'm gonna add a couple clip lights to the shelf or I might just hang like one more overhead and shine it down on this entire shelf. I am at my kitchen sink. <laughs> so uh, the Hoya video that I did where I cleaned them all and I was treating all the mealies, there were a few Hoya that I didn't repot that I spotted a few mealies on. And one of those Hoyas, my compacta, it's like the worst plant to get mealies on. <laughs> um, this one, I noticed a few more mealies popping up on it. I haven't really seen mealies on any of the ones that I did like actually take outside outside and hose off. I do wish I sort of did that with this plant now because yeah, just finding a few mealies can really, uh, they can really multiply. So I think over the course of just the next several weeks, I'll just keep in mind that this one has some mealies and it's not a lot. I just see like a random few on here. So I'm just taking some like isopropyl alcohol, like rubbing alcohol on a Q-tip and just like spot treating any that I see right away so that they don't continue to spread. And that was like another reason I wanted the uh, Hoyas contained was so that they didn't spread around more. So I'm a little nervous having them in my bedroom now. But again, I think it'll be okay because there's not like a huge infestation. I'm just gonna clean it with alcohol really good. And hopefully like that's it, no more will pop up. So just to get the crevices, I'm gonna take some of my Castile soap and just spray it really good in the sink. I was watering my staghorn fern that was outside. I've been very neglectful with it out there this year. I've severely underwatered it and 
I let it outside so it burned in several spots. I had to cut several leaves off. So yeah, I feel bad about that. I think next year I'm not going to put it outside. Just going to set this on a towel so it can dry. I'll probably uh, hang it up in here somewhere like closer to a window or some light. I spotted a mealy on this one too, darn it. Okay, it was just one. <laughs> Sertusa is one that I completely took outside and hosed down and repotted. So I seriously doubt anything would be on this one unless a new one like flew onto it. I think it was just the ones that I didn't repot. I would say for the most part, all the Hoyas have done well, the ones that were over here. My Crimson Princess is the only one that's struggling a bit. Um, cause it had flat mites before it came down with mealies really bad. Yeah, I think we're good on this one. There's a few on this one too. I'm going to respray this one with Castile soap. None of the Hoyas in my plant room caught mealies. It was just the ones that were in this east window. So next spring, I don't think I'm gonna put any Hoya uh, in this area. I hate to keep them in my north bedroom, but if they can grow well with just the grow lights, then I might just leave them in there. I don't know what kind of pest <laughs> lingers in my uh, primary bedroom. The I feel like the plant room tends to get spider mites because of the south window. And this one I know now like mealies come in through this window. I'm definitely going to think about that next year where I place certain plants that are more prone to getting certain pests. Um, I definitely don't want to put Hoyas back here if they're going to get mealies again. So I don't know what I'm going to do next year with some of these Hoyas. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> so I'm going to let those kind of dry. We can put this one in the bedroom. This is the only other Hoya that is really sad uh, since I did the whole treatment thing. I honestly, I don't know if any more mealies have come back. But oh, oh yes, there's some more mealies. Dang it. 
I see one. But do you see there's like a lot of wrinkled stones? Um, there's a mealy right there in that crevice. I think I might just end up purchasing a new crimson uh, princess and starting over. This one just, I don't know, it just doesn't seem to be doing well. Some strands are happy, but most of the strands are very sad. It never really grew last year. Ever since the whole flat mite situation, it just, it just didn't do well. So I don't know. I mean, I could just repot the healthy strands together and just see what grows, you know, in some time. But yeah, I'm gonna cut off all the dead strands and spray this one with Castile soap. What I'll end up doing is since some of these have mealies, I'll just do like, if I don't get to it every week, I'll do it every other week. I'll just like keep treating and hopefully they'll go away. Um, I fixed my poles. I'll show you those. I moved them to that side. So that side is like very squished. So I'm ready and prepped in this area. So now what I'm going to do is refill my pump sprayer with Castile soap because I used it all for spraying the Hoyas again. I got all the Hoyas put into the bedroom. I do have more room in there, but like I said, I don't think I want to put plants that were outside in there just yet, just in case. Ooh. And I just kind of guesstimate maybe like a good tablespoon in here. I just brought this ficus, one of these shivrianas in, the other one's in my plant room. But this one is covered in spider mites. It was on my front porch. I don't know if you can see the webbing there. Yeah, so this one is getting... I think the thing that I most freaked out about would be spiders because I hate spiders. Uh, this one's getting drenched. I'm going to wash all cash pots out and everything.
So it's a very soapy mess. I'm gonna let this sit for like a few minutes in my sink here and then I'll rinse it off. But yeah, this guy was covered in spider mites and it's really hard to see out on my porch. Cause again, I'm not really checking these guys like I would my indoor plants. Um, even though it has a ton of roots coming out of the bottom, I'm not going to repot this one till the spring. It'll be fine to stay in here uh, till then because I want to combine this with my other one as long as it does okay. I'm gonna isolate him in the corner, but since it's a ficus, I want it to get a really good light, so I don't wanna jeopardize light because of the spider mites. So I'm just gonna leave him like in his own little corner in the window. And then I'm gonna put some beneficial mites on it to hopefully combat any extra spider mites that happen to show up. This like snow slash marble queen that I found at the big box store, it's very sad because I had underwatered it out on my front porch. I feel bad about that, but it should perk up. I gave it a good drench. And what I'm kind of doing too is plants that have been like sitting on the ground. I've been like drenching them and making sure like no ants or anything like that shows up. If I just like drench the soil and then I drenched it in Castile soap. So um, I'm gonna let this drain for a bit. Uh, and it should perk up hopefully by like tomorrow or so after it got a good drink. So I'm curious to see how this one's going to do. I'll probably honestly just set this one on a stand like right here by my window. I'll probably use that stand that my Hoya was on since my Hoya is in the bedroom right now. That's probably what I'll do with this guy. I'm worried my big ficus has spider mites now too. <laughs> it looks very sad because I had moved it to more sun. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna put, I don't think I'm gonna put my ficus outside next year. I just, like I said, I just feel like I neglect plants out there and then they're, I feel like they're more prone to get pest. I need to put the ficus in this corner too. Cause that one definitely needs to get more light. So let me go get that and I'm gonna bring it here and then clean the leaves. I don't know what happened with this guy. The leaves look really bad on it. They definitely got burnt. A lot of them got very burnt.
So I'm sort of bringing them in one by one and showering them off really good in there. And then I'm spraying them with Castile soap and then rinsing that off after like 10 minutes. They're fighting. They are so crazy. <laughs> um, so yeah, and I'm kind of flooding the soil too that way if there is like a pest, uh, like ants or something, I'll be able to tell. And these plants are super thirsty, so I wouldn't do this if your soil is already wet because then you're gonna risk root rot, especially coming into less light inside and a cooler environment. Um, so yeah, that was the other thing, like I waited to make sure that these plants were like really thirsty. And then when I go to water in nematodes, I'm just watering them in just a little bit. So the soil will already be wet. So I'm not risking overwatering, if that makes sense. So yeah, just letting the hot, it's like lukewarm water, showering them for a few minutes, spraying with Castile soaps, letting it sit for 10 minutes, showering again, <laughs> kind of repeating the process. Only one plant can really fit in there at a time. So I'm definitely gonna have to finish up tomorrow. I can probably do like a few more tonight just because each plant's taking like 20 minutes. <laughs> Once they've drained a little, I've been kind of sitting them there to kind of dry a little bit. And then I will probably put them in their designated spot. And then tomorrow I'll water in the nematodes. And especially uh, before I bring them in, I'm making sure they don't have thrips. <laughs> if they have spider mites, it is what it is. Like I can get rid of them. Same with like aphids or mealies or something like that. But if a plant has thrips, it's not coming in here. Like the alocasia that's out there, uh, it's more than likely gonna go dormant this season, but I'm not gonna bring it in just because it's had thrips for like the past month. Even though I've treated it several times, they keep coming back on it. So um, yeah, I don't think anything else has thrips that's outside currently, but I'm just like thoroughly inspecting before I'm bringing them into the house. <laughs> Uh, so I'm not br potentially bringing a pest in and I would have done this outside like with a hose But it's just so much colder now And I just don't want that cold water to shock them So I'd rather like bring them in and make sure that they get some like lukewarm water if that makes sense <laughs> So yeah, I'm just gonna keep doing this and then uh, Just let them kind of dry on the floor here and I'll see how much I can get done in the next hour before it gets like really dark <laughs> they are racing and then um, I'll pop pop back on here and kind of fill you in on the progress since the ficus kind of lost some soil just from I think just runoff watering um, I'm going to add just a tiny bit of soil on top to kind of fill around the gaps I'm not like going to repot it it just lost some soil so I'm just kind of sprinkling uh, some around on top. A lot of these leaves like really crisped, crisped up. <laughs> they look kind of bad. I think the ones that are really bad, I might just cut off like this one. I'm gonna pull that one off. And that one's really bad. I'm not liking the stand. It's a little too big for this ficus. I'd rather it be down lower. I just don't want the cats to get into it. So I have some other stands that are outside that are lower. So I'll probably do this one there. I just wanted to get it, to get it like as close to the window as possible. Um, so yeah, I'll get a stand, a lower one and elevate that up. 
kind of like in the window more. Because I really wanted to use that for this Marble Queen, I think. Once that kind of perks up, I think it'll look better. Okay, I found that one out in the garage. Um, I don't know if I'm liking it. <laughs> Just because the pot is so pretty. I don't know, I'll probably switch it out. I was hoping to have something that was just a little bit more flat on top, but I'm just gonna leave it for now just to get it off the ground. So right now I have the kind of Snow Queen-ish one there. That ficus that had spider mites in the window got cleaned really good. That ficus. I have a Aria prop from the import. The other three props are right here. I might just leave those on the shelf. I think they'll be fine right there. I didn't really want to bring too many plants over this way. I even have little ones like this left, like this purple oxalis that I had since the spring. It's pretty much gone dormant, but then it grew back a little bit. I haven't repotted it or anything, so I might just actually stick this one in the bedroom or maybe on the shelf. I might stuff it on the shelf. Chai will eat this one, so I have to definitely keep this out of his reach. And then I sort of have this sad rehab painted lady that I don't know what I'm gonna do with. And I still have my Jose prop. I have this Orbifolia rehab. I'll probably definitely stick this one in the bedroom since it's a Calathea. See, so yeah, I still have a lot to do. <laughs> Um, I checked my Amazon order the, for the grow lights and I don't think those are coming until like eight o'clock or nine o'clock tonight. And I have to like set all that up too. So here is one of my deliciosas in this little corner shoved. I think this is all I'm gonna do tonight. I was gonna try and do more, but I'm honestly kind of tired. And um, I think I'm just gonna get up early and start tomorrow. That's the new leaf, it's so pretty. Yeah, I am getting a head start in the morning. So yes, I will see you guys back here bright and early. Good morning. Sorry if you hear the washing machine. <laughs> um, I just kind of woke up for like the past hour or so. I've taken care of the cats. I cracked open an energy drink. I'm doing some laundry, <laughs> but I'm gonna get started bright and early. Uh, Sundays are, are normally my reset day, so I like to take Sundays to like tidy up the house, clean the bathrooms, clean the cat boxes, stuff like that. So I have to do all that today too, in addition to still watering all the plants and getting all the plants inside. And uh, I have to set up those grow light areas. Hi. So yeah, I'm gonna get started. Uh, it's 7.28 right now. I uh, forgot the time, went back. Well, I didn't forget. I like wasn't thinking, like my brain wasn't braining. I had set my alarm to get up at six. So with the fall back, it was still six. Uh, Cause technically it would have been seven if it was the day before, if that, does that make sense? So I, I honestly should have set it at five so that when the alarm went off, it was still five. And the day before, it would have been six o'clock since the time went back. So I set it for six in my brain, I was thinking, oh, the time's gonna go back an hour. So if I set it for six, I'll be getting up at five. But no, six was still six o'clock because the phone and everything adjusted on my alarm clock. Um, I don't know if that makes sense. In my brain, I am still like an hour behind than I wanted to. <laughs> like, I think it should be 6.30 right now instead of 7.30, but that's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I think the plan for this morning, I'm gonna open up the packages real quick and just see what I'm working with with the grow light stuff. I'm starting to feel a little like overwhelmed sensation. I always put pressure on myself to try and have everything done by the end of Sunday because even though Monday I kind of have like my own work schedule, I like to start my Mondays off with like everything done. There's the washing machine. <laughs> um, I have to mail a plant out tomorrow 
And so I think tomorrow I might run to the grocery store really quick and come back home because I need to film uh, again tomorrow and I need to edit. So I feel like I'm really, I'm behind on videos. I don't know. I think it's because I've been doing, I did that vlog that lasted two days and then this weekend is taking up a lot of like time to film, if that makes sense. I feel like I just need some quick videos. So I think I might work on that at the beginning part of this week so I can get some content filmed so I can edit those and get those up. Let me show you my Marvel Queen really quick because it's perked up a lot since I watered it and brought it in. They're waiting to go outside. They want me to open the door for them. <laughs> uh, but look, it's like so perky now compared to last night. I guess this one's technically a Snow Queen. It's a lot more uh, white than my other one, my OG one, but that looks a lot better. And then, yeah, the ficus, I don't know if I'm gonna leave those there. I kinda just put some stuff in the window to get them up off the counter for the cats. And then that big Monstera is right there. And that's my OG Marble Queen, that one there. This one um, has beautiful color too. That has some Snow Queenish leaves. I honestly don't know why I got that one. <laughs> I'm not super hungry or anything yet, so I might wait till like 10 or so to eat. Uh, I have a couple like Amazon package I was gonna open really quick just to make sure I got everything. Okay, so these are the uh, E26 cords. You just screw the grow light into here and that's just like a standard white cord. And I have a two pack here. You can get these in like a one pack, a four pack. They're pretty inexpensive. I don't even remember what I paid for this, for the two pack. Let me see. The two pack was $9.99, so four. So they're basically $5 each and they come with the hooks too. So you just, uh, you can use this to screw onto the wall and it will hang from the wall. But um, I don't recommend, unless you like hang it from the ceiling, this will work. But if you wanna hang it not from the ceiling and just from the actual vertical wall going up, I got something else because that's what I plan on doing in two places. Uh, so that's like the kit there is what it comes with. And then you can get, the four pack was only 15. I was gonna get the four pack, but I figured I don't need four. So I just got the two pack for $10. I mean, you can't beat that. Here's my other package. All right. and. I didn't get everything. I'm missing something. What didn't come? Oh no, there's something arriving 10 p.m. today. Oh man. I will, I'll show you what I ordered. I ordered two more like goosenecks uh, clips that you can just screw the grow light on and this you can clip onto a shelf. I have these in white, not the same brand, but the two clips in black were only $18.79, so not even $10 each for a clip like this. And then you can screw any kind of grow bulb into it. So I got the black to use on some shelves that are darker. So this will be, this is what's arriving later. I was gonna use these in the room with the Hoyas in my bedroom. Uh, so that the Hoyas can get some good light while they're in there for like, I guess they'll be in there for five months. And I also got a four pack of my outlet timers. This is by, I don't know if that's Blink or how do you pronounce that? This is what I currently have. It's a big plug, but you can only plug one thing into here like that. But I like these cause I already have these already. I already have the app downloaded. I have like, seven of these already. The same company makes a bigger one that holds eight, four or on a timer. And then I have two of those in my plant room. They don't work through the phone, but you can set it up to come on and off automatically. It's a bigger one. I really like that too. So I definitely recommend these. I, I think this was like $20 for the four pack. I normally just get the two pack, but I figured I always need outlet timers. So I figured I might as well just get four. I got some little clips for the cords. These are like five bucks 
to put onto the wall just to help like hold the cord to the wall. I'm pretty sure I have some already, but I don't I don't know where I'd where I put it. And then I also got this. And this is what I'm gonna use for the grow light. It's a two pack, this was very inexpensive. So I'm just gonna screw this onto the wall like that so that it's out. And then I'll just use the grow light cord down from here and secure it so that my grow light can hang from here. Cause I didn't wanna hang it from the ceiling. So I figured this would be perfect to just hang it like a foot above the plant leaf. So I'm gonna do one of these for I was thinking about doing one of these for the Monstera area or one of these for the Hoyas. I feel like I need more clip lights though for the Monsteras out here, I'm not sure. And then the other one I was gonna do at the front door for my snake plants. I'm gonna hang a grow light from the wall like down from that. And I mean, I feel like it's not too obvious. Like if I, uh, I can always take the screws out and everything if I don't end up like liking it, like I can easily fix nail holes basically. So yeah, we'll get that set up later on. So yeah, I'm gonna be kind of on and off of here all morning. I'm just gonna get started bringing the rest of my plants in. I think I'm gonna start out back and get the rest of the big monsteras in cause I'm using my hubby shower. So <laughs> I need to like uh, finish up in there before he comes home. <laughs> I think he's coming home at five or four. So I have a good like, eight hours. My goal is to be done by the time he gets home. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this is one of my uh, Deliciosas, my OG one. <laughs> I just like drug it in. I was gonna like start rinsing it off, but then do you see what's happening down here? It won't even stand up straight because I had tested out a grow bag and I'm just gonna put it back in a nursery pot. I'm gonna see what I can scrounge up in the garage and just like lift it up out of here and repot it and get all these aerial roots like potted up. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know why I decided to do a grow bag. I honestly don't know. There could be spiders or something in here too. So I'm gonna do that before I take it to my shower because I feel like once this gets wet, it's gonna be a disaster. This is like the only thing out in my garage that I can find. Uh, so yeah, we're just gonna use this.
here she goes. I opened my east windows all the way just so the morning sun could come in. I am gonna be adding a grow light like up ahead right here because once the morning sun kind of leaves, it's a little bit dark in this corner. It looks very bright right now, but it doesn't last. So I have one that I just did right here and the other one here. They're very crammed and I still have one more small one that I'm going to do like right here. So yeah, those are the two deliciosas. Took a lot more time than I had anticipated. <laughs> so I'm going to grab a couple more plants and sit them in the shower and let them soak. And then I'm going to make me some breakfast real quick. I think just a couple eggs and like a protein shake or something is what I'm craving. It's looking a lot emptier out here. <laughs> There's still a lot to do. And the canna lily I'm leaving outside. If it happens to frost, I'll maybe bring it in for the night or put it in the garage or something. It's a little droopy because it was severely thirsty. So I'm just gonna leave it in this corner. And I'm getting ready to cut back my squammy. I'm really sad about that. I'm sad that I didn't notice that there's something fungal going on with it. I think it had the same issue that my bird of paradise was having out here. And I'm just so sad that I just now noticed it. Uh, it was turned around the other way, so that was facing the screen. So I never saw the front of the leaves. I only saw the backside of it, which I just assumed it was fine from the backside. Like the leaves still look fine and everything. So can you see the fungal issue going on where it's dark like that? Do you see? It's literally on every single leaf and I did not pick up on that. This is like one of the newer newer ones it's on. It's like a black, some kind of black fungal thing going on. So yeah, it hasn't been growing that much recently. So I just thought maybe it was just slowing down for the season. You know, it gets light out here, but not a ton of light. So yeah, I'm just gonna be propagating a bunch of nodes up. I'm not gonna be able to keep any of the leaves and I'm just gonna get rid of the base, the root system and everything. So yeah, it really stinks to start over with this plant. It's just taken so long to, I feel like, get to this point. I just think it's too severely spread that there's no saving. Like the damaged leaves are damaged. There's no saving it and I don't want to risk spreading it to any of my other plants. So yeah, it really sucks. I hate to do this, I really do, but I just don't know what else to do. Again, this is like another reason that, not necessarily putting plants outside, I just think this was uh, something that happened with the fungal issue from the rainwater in the barrel that I just never caught. I just assumed it was doing fine out here. This really stinks. I'm gonna cut like right here. You guys can't see. I'm gonna cut right here. Oh man, that sucked. Yeah, literally just propping this entire thing, all the wet sticks. I've kind of got it in my head like if something happens to a plant, it's okay. You're like, it's okay to start over. Leaves are leaves. Um, they'll grow back. You, you can see it on like the back side too. You can see it in the light, especially the fungal issue. like that. I hope you can see that and make it out. It's kind of hard to tell because the plant leaves are so dark. It's literally on every single one. I 
I'm so upset. I really like the Squammy. So the only thing I'm doing now is literally just cutting between each node. I'm just going to propagate it up. I'll take care of this later today. These little wet sticks can sit out even like overnight. You don't have to take care of it right away. I'm just gonna let these ends dry. And then what I'll do is find a container and I'll just prop these in sphagnum moss. Stem's getting really hard to cut. I'm not gonna save this. I don't know. That looks like fungal-ish to me, that black spot there on this top section. I think I'm just gonna trash that. So these are all the wet sticks I'll save and I'll just start my plant over. I'll like use one or two to restart my plant over and then as they grow, you know, I'll get rid of the other ones down the road. So yeah, just taking my cup, I'll clean these sticks off and we'll propagate up these wet sticks later. I have my Birds of Paradise in the shower right now. So the only plants out here that I that are technically like on the outside outside is the Dracaena and uh, Billy that are out there. Um, the Dracaena I might leave. Uh, I need to repot that one. Um, the Billy I repotted at the beginning of summer, so that one should be fine. But since it's been on the outside, outside, I'm worried there's like something in the soil. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna soak those really good with water and like flush anything out like in the shower. And then I have those two old moss poles that I'm just gonna take cuttings of and just uh, propagate them up. And then that alocasia out there is like severely droopy because it wants water, but it's it still has thrip. So what I'll probably do is just cut the leaves off and let it go dormant outside. And then if it grows back in the spring, I'll like replant it. And then out front, I still have my snake plants and succulents and cacti I still have to take care of. So still feel like a little behind schedule today. I think just the repotting and stuff is taking more time initially than I thought, I guess. And like, stuff like this that I wasn't expecting <laughs> to happen, but it's okay. We're still like moving along. It's still early. It's only like 10 something. So
Dracaena is quickly repotted. I don't know where the orange bugs went. I saw at least two more. So I don't know if I spray them off or they're gonna show up once I leave this plant alone. <laughs> um, I'm gonna take it into the bathroom and use Castile soap and shower it off. I'm gonna put it in there. Um, so yeah, that's it out here. It's crazy how empty it is. And then, yeah, I just have a few plants out front, my snake plants and succulents, and everyone will be brought in. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, I don't know. I wish I could leave them out here year round. And I probably could, honestly, I could probably get away with leaving plants out here and just on a really cold night, either covering them or bringing them in for the night. But I don't know. I'm going to test it next year. I'm going to plant some plants out here at this tree that's in our yard. I'm going to plant a monstera and like a cutting and a cutting of like a golden pothos or something. And I want to see if I can get it to climb up the tree out here and if it will survive the winter. Because if that's the case, then yeah, maybe in the future I'll be tempted to leave some plants out here. I would love a greenhouse out here one day, I think, or one year, but I feel like I would be scared of one, like snakes and spiders getting into the greenhouse. Cause then if I see something like that, I would be terrified and I don't think I could ever go back in it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we'll see. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna uh, meet you. I'll probably repot my whale fin inside. Um, so yeah, I will do that here shortly. I am out in my garage now. It got so hot, I'm sweating. I had to put a t-shirt on. <laughs> I just moved my snake plants out um, on the driveway. I'm gonna hose them off real quick and then repot the uh, couple of planters that I have to do. Um, and I'll set you up so you can see some of that. And then, yeah, the rest of the day is just gonna be spent indoors, watering nematodes and rearranging, cleaning, setting lights up, all that. So I'll be glad to finally get this last little bit of outside plants done. <laughs> So they're just going to sit out here in the sun and kind of drain. Um, I used the hose to like pull the water a few times through so that I made sure to like really saturate the soil so if anything like a pest or something was in there I feel like they would try to escape because of the drowning effect. I wanted a terracotta pot but the only thing I could find at the store that they had was a plastic one. Uh, it's quite a bit of a size jump but it'll be okay. Uh, and since it's not terracotta, I just have to make sure to uh, watch my watering on this one. But it's got drain holes. And we're just going to do the same thing, like plop and fill. I'll probably just get my fox farm. I'm probably gonna need more and just mix some perlite up in here if I don't have enough. <laughs> it was definitely uh, missing some soil, I would say. We're gonna flush this out after we're done anyway, so if there are critters, they'll come flying out. I'll use that for my other snake plant, if it'll fit. Okay, I need to make some more soil up real quick. Uh, 
I'm out of orchid bark, but that's okay. It's just succulents. I don't really care too much. I brought these in. So I have my whale fins that I repotted and those two big ones. And then I have that one that I repotted in there and then a prop there. And so the only ones that are still outside that you can see is the cactus and the succulent planter. And I think they'll be fine out there. I feel like I'm in some kind of jungle over here. <laughs> um, I'll kind of give you a little rundown. So the Marble Queen, I have the two ficus plants. Kind of in the window, I have some various props. And then I shoved all three of my Deliciosas in that corner. I put the Birds of Paradise here, and then my Billy right there. And I still have to work on hanging the light up there. And I have to water in nematodes and everything yet. And then I just moved these three poles off to the side here. So it is a very crammed corner, <laughs> very full. I need to shower. I've been running around like crazy. My husband should be home in an hour or so. <laughs> I spent like the past hour or so tidying up, tidying up and cleaning this kitchen area. So it's good. I cleaned and vacuumed the living space, the bedroom, <laughs> cleaned the bathrooms. Uh, so the only thing that's really left is to hang the lights and water and nematodes. And I haven't watered my plant room or anything yet or any of my other plants. <sighs> It's like 3.30 right now, so I'm definitely feeling tired. I'm feeling like I'm ready to call it quits, <laughs> but it is Monday tomorrow and I have stuff to do. So I really wanna try and get my plants watered in my plant room. But I think in the next hour, I'm gonna try and get these grow light situations hung and just get that over with. Cause if I don't do it tonight, I feel like I'm gonna procrastinate even longer. <laughs> Um, so my other cords came, Amazon dropped them off. So I'm gonna open everything up and uh, get to installing them. And yeah, then we'll get to watering in nematodes. <laughs> These are the Sansi bulbs. I like the 15 watts. Uh, that's how big that one is. And then you can see I have one of the 10 watts, the size difference. I do have one of the 36 watts, but they're kind of heavy and they get really hot. Um, it's good for like big plants, but I think this one is still fine for like a certain area, like a certain plant. Um, so these are the longer cords that we can hook. Uh, these ones probably will need to be screwed into an extension cord depending on how far away from the outlet it is. And again, I got these hooks to hang from the wall. 
because I don't think I'm going to hang those into the ceiling. And then these will hook around here so that the cord's not falling. And then I have the clips and the outlet timers and the cord little uh, clips if I need them. So you can buy like basic ones like this or uh, let me show you in my plant room. I have a mess going on. <laughs> Uh, see, I wish I would have checked inventory. I have a couple extension cords and then I have already have two of those white clips. And then I had bought that previously. It's just a cord that you can hang a grow light on from a ceiling or whatever. It's just a little bit more aesthetic, I guess, if you don't like the all white, plain, basic look. So I just had to figure out what, uh, what cords I want to use and for what. I have a plug right there so I'm thinking I'm going to screw uh, one of the cords up above like here probably that spot and hang down. It's not really going to get that one as much for light but again it'll be fine. They can tolerate low light for a few months. So for this, one of the Sansi, I'm gonna use the 15 watts. It just screws into here. It just twists. And then we're gonna use the little clips that it came with to make sure that this doesn't like fall. And then I'm just going to plug the end to my outlet timer. I have to set this up and everything uh, so it's not going to work right now. But I have a plug back here. And this will be like a perfect fit. I won't have to use an extension cord. And once I get it on a timer, it'll actually come off and on. But look, I just created light. <laughs> so that's what it looks like. This literally costs like less than 20 bucks for, and that's like buying in bulk. Like the cords, the two pack was only $10 for the two pack. So the cord was $5. This little hook was probably a couple dollars. And then the grow light when I got it on sale was like, was less than $10. And that's for the 15 watt. And you can make this as a uh, low or high as you want. You can just like feed the cord and then, you know, you can keep it however close that you want to your plants. What I'll probably end up doing since this is a little bit more on this side, I'll probably end up like rotating those every once in a while, like maybe every couple of weeks so that one doesn't get more light than the other because that one is kind of further away, but it'll be fine. And I don't have to get like a fancy, lampshade or anything like that. That is just like my little temporary setup and it's not like hanging from the ceiling or anything. I think it looks good. I'm gonna do the exact same thing above my Monsteras over there. And then I think I'm gonna use the clips in my plant or in my bedroom for the Hoyas. So I think I'm gonna take, I'm gonna save a 15 watt for the Monsteras. And then I think I'll take a 15 and 10 and go ahead and do these in the bedroom. The goosenecks are nice too because you can literally clip it on anything and then this bends. You can bend it however you want. And you can't use the 36 watt with this because it, it won't stay. It's just too heavy that it will fall like right down. It won't stay in the position that you want it to stay in. So the 15 is still heavy, but it will still allow you to bend it. Um, or you could just use the 10. I'm just trying to figure out where I want to clip this. Okay, so what I did, so I have the 15 in the front and then the 10 up top. <laughs> I think that'll, that'll be doable. And then I have a 30 watt over here. So it's definitely a lot brighter. Uh, I think the Hoyas will be okay with that until 
the springtime. I just finished this one and same situation. I have it pretty close to the top leaf, so could I use more light? Most definitely, but you know, it's gonna work for now. It's by the window here, so it's gonna get this east light and then the additional light from above. I definitely could have used a big like 36 watt or something or 40 watt from the ceiling here. Um, but this was my budget friendly option that I wanted to, that I wanted to do. Cause I feel like I have so many grow lights. So it's impossible for me to give the best light to every single one of my plants, <laughs> but the Monsteras will appreciate some sort of light from above. That is better than nothing. And you can see most of the plant is in the dark, especially now in the evening. So, that's just gonna have to do. I think what I might do is just clean up this now, this mess that I made, and then um, I may start watering here and doing the whole nematode thing. I might just do half and just get, pour a little bit. I, my mind would feel better if I can at least get it in the plants that were outside. That way, if there is something in the soil, the nematodes will start working. <laughs> It'll take them some time uh, to start working, but I already saw a couple of fungus gnats fly. So I feel like I need to, I need to do it before they go crazy and start hatching and multiplying. Uh, so yeah, that is my plan for this evening. I'll probably pop back on at some point later and just kind of fill you in on how it's going and kind of end the vlog, I guess. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'll pop back on a bit later. I'm kind of just going to take my time, probably relax a little bit. Oh, that's probably my husband. <laughs> Hello, it's the evening time. <laughs> I'm about to open up the nematodes and start watering them in. I think what I'm gonna do this time around, so I ordered 25 million, which is a lot. Normally I do 10 million and I do that in about four to five gallons to water in all my plants. Um, but I could only get 25 from, I wanted 15 since I have more plants to water these in with the outside plants this time. But what I'm going to do is like do a scoop or two into, I have two watering jugs and I don't have anything in my water. I'm not going to use fertilizer for the next, a uh, couple waterings and I don't want to add anything in there. I just don't want to harm the nematodes. And you have to water them in in an hour because they'll drown. So I think I'm just going to do two jugs and see how far that gets me with the plants that I brought in and the Hoya and everything else. And then I'll move into my plant room, whatever I don't finish tonight, because it's getting kind of late. I'll finish tomorrow. That way I'll just stick this back in my fridge in the meantime. I'll just like put it in a little Ziploc bag. I think it'll be okay if I open it up and do it that way. Uh, because this is only good for 30 days unactivated in the fridge. So if I don't get to all of it tonight, yeah, I won't feel bad. And I'll be sure to link my nematode video if you haven't seen it. I go into a lot more details and this is gonna kill the larvae in the soil, whether it be thrips, fungus gnats, those are like my main two uh, things that I'm worried about. I'm just doing one scoop like that. Okay, and I'm gonna stick this back in my fridge and then you just wanna shake this really good cause it kinda settles there. So just shake it up really good and then you can start watering.
All right, I have all the nematodes watered in. It actually went pretty quickly. I didn't move anyone. I just watered in their spot. I don't like to do that. But some of the plants were not thirsty, but I just did like a little bit of nematode water to not overwater. <laughs> uh, so at least I have peace of mind that every plant got some sort of water today. The only thing that I'm gonna do for the next little bit before I call it a night is water my moss poles. I have to just water the moss. So I'm gonna quickly water them. I may not be able to like water them all the way tonight, but I'll just come in here tomorrow and kind of finish that. And yeah, what a long weekend. I cannot believe it is Sunday night. I feel good that the plants are in. Nematodes are watered. I got some plants repotted. Uh, I feel good going into the winter season. I gave some plants more light. So now I can kind of focus on, I think my next big task that's bothering me is some of my moss poles need like chopped. They're getting a little overwhelming. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I think that's my next task as far as plant stuff goes. I cannot wait to shower, honestly. I feel so gross. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I feel accomplished. I, I will feel good going into my Monday tomorrow. If you watch this all the way through, thank you. <laughs> um, I appreciate you so much. So thank you for watching and for being here. Let me know if you have any questions and I will talk to you guys again soon.